How does the light from the sun get from here to there? It all starts at the core of the sun, where nuclear fusion occurs. Hydrogen atoms travel at a high speed in the hot, dense core and smashes into one another, literally fusing them together and turns into helium. Matter is destroyed and energy is given off. From the core, the particles travel through the radiative zone where energy travels in the form of photons. They bounce from particle to particle, constantly being absorbed and re-emitted, taking over a million years for a photon to find its way out. As the photons move further up in the sun, the density decreases, resulting in less collisions. It is then carried through swirls of heated plasma, like a soup boiling in a pot. The gases radiate energy in the surface, then cool and sink again, ready to pick up more energy. This process takes about 10 days before it emerges from the solar surface and makes its way to Earth. By the time these photons reach Earth, it has already been in existence for millions of years. Meaning, the photons that touch your skin today existed before the dinosaurs. From the convention zone, it only takes 8 minutes to travel 150 million kilometers. That means, we see the sun as it was 8 minutes ago. If the sun were to disappear, we wouldn't know until 8 minutes after the fact. The sun is actually white. The light emitted from the sun is all of the visible frequencies of light. The blue, indigo, and violet components have shorter wavelengths and are scattered by the Earth's atmosphere, making the sky appear blue, leaving the red, orange, and yellow less scattered and making the sunlight appear yellow. Two to five solar eclipses occur each year, turning day into night. Solar eclipses occur when the moon passes between the Earth and the sun. But because its orbital path is tilted about 5 degrees, we only see eclipses every one and a half year. The longest total solar eclipse ever recorded was in July 11, 1991, lasting 6 minutes and 53 seconds. The sun is 400 times the diameter of the moon and is also 400 times further away from the Earth. So, when our moon passes in front of our sun, given the right circumstances, it can completely obscure it turning day into night. The sun is actually small compared to other stars. Even though 1.3 million Earths can fit inside the sun, it's actually miniature compared to UY Scotty, a red supergiant star with an estimated radius 1,700 greater than that of the sun. If it were placed in the middle of our solar system, it would engulf all the way to the orbit of Jupiter. 100 billion tons of dynamite would have to be detonated every second to match the energy produced by the sun. Every second. Its energy is enough to power 2,880 trillion light bulbs. That is more than enough power to give each person on Earth a light bulb that will shine for the rest of their lives. It also reverses its magnetic polarity. Every 11 years, the North Magnetic Pole becomes the South Pole and vice versa. This affects the appearance of the sunspots, which peak at around 4 years after the start of the cycle, but they can be mainly seen 15 degrees north and south of the equator. But what are the differences between sunspots, solar flares, and CMEs? Sunspots are cooler areas of the photosphere and occur when the sun's magnetic field is affected by its uneven rotation. They are often larger than Earth and usually occur in groups of up to 100 at a time and can last from half a day to several weeks. Solar flares are explosions that occur when built up magnetic energy in the solar system are suddenly released. It takes less than 30 minutes to reach the Earth and major flares can trigger coronal mass ejections, or CMEs. CMEs are huge bubbles of plasma ejected from the sun into space and often follow a solar flare. The largest CME that hit the Earth was in 1859, known as the Carrington event, which caused telegraph communications to fail. In July 2012, a CME almost as powerful narrowly hit the Earth. Had the storm occurred a week before, the blast site would have been facing the Earth. If a solar storm were to occur today, it would knock down the global positioning systems on our cell phones, airplanes, cars, and many of our satellites. Every time you buy anything with your credit card, it's a satellite transaction. Every time you check the weather on your phone app or stream a video on Netflix or YouTube, it uses satellite communications. CMEs will blow out giant transformers and knock down electrical grids, not only causing power outages all over the globe for weeks, months, or even years, but also costing trillions of dollars in losses. But how long will the sun last? The sun is a yellow dwarf and eventually it will burn out. Yellow dwarfs usually last about 10 billion years and the sun is halfway through its lifetime. 
near the end of its life, it will swell up large enough to engulf the earth. So the next time you look up at the sky and see the brightness of the sun or feel its warmth on your skin, keep in mind that this magnificent, powerful ball of light will eventually come to its end. Perhaps by then, we'll be watching it come to the end of its life on another planet in a different solar system.